Hi, my name is Lynn and this is the Darby Notes channel and this is part two of the coffee build, coffee table build where I just kind of want to go over everything in a little bit more detail, how I constructed the base and also finishing it. So first off with the base, um, when I made this project I really wanted something that was very simple to construct where you didn't need a whole lot of tools, which is why I built the legs the way I did. Uh, and they basically are constructed with a 1x2 and a 1x2 and then one other piece that is glued and stapled to this one. That's because I wanted them to be square and just this one and this piece doesn't make it square. So I attach this little square piece here which really measures 3 quarters by 3 quarters of an inch uh, to make this a little bit longer so that when I connect all of these together they make it for a square leg. And because this is red wood, I used Type Bond 3 glue, which is supposed to be better with oily woods. I used the staple gun to connect the rails to the legs as well, just measuring them out uh, and stapling everything together. It really couldn't be simpler. And then I also decided to add some rails in the middle, again connected with the staple gun. Now I need to connect the base here with the top. And, and the, I'm just going to do that very simply again by attaching screws. I'm going to countersink uh, some screws in and just connect the two together. Very simple. So let's just do that. Okay. And yeah, I might as well add a few in the middle here as well. That's why I connected the rails here, just to make sure that the top was to support it in the middle as well as the side. So nothing will sag eventually. I now have the top underneath here uh, and I'm just going to screw in some screws to connect it in here. Mm -hmm. And these are star shaped one and a half inch bits. They work quite nicely. Okay, let's see here. I put a piece of plywood under here just to protect the top if there was any, anything on my bench. Actually, it was, it was pretty interesting because I first finished this with a water-based poly. Um, however, I let the table sit outside as it was drying for some time. It was probably three hours outside. It wasn't raining or anything. There was just a little bit of moisture in the air. I live in Oregon and it gets misty here. So I thought I'd slid it out to dry. But then when I checked on it a couple of hours later, I actually saw that there were a little bit of mold you know, every here and there. And I mean, it's kind of psychic because when you think about it, I sprayed water-based polyurethane. So it had water in it and it was drying outside and that caused, uh, you know, it reacted with a bit of a mildew. And that was on the fur pieces especially. And uh, I didn't like that. <laughs> so I planed off those parts that had that a little bit and I decided to put on some oil-based polyurethane instead. Or, you know, on top, I didn't take off the water-based polyurethane everywhere, just playing down some parts. Um, so that's why it looks a has a little bit more of a yellow tone now, because it has the oil-based polyurethane. So now I'm at the point here where I really want to finish the table. And my best way of doing that is to apply some wax with steel wool. Because um, whether you paint or you put polyurethane or whatever your finish is, it doesn't leave it silky smooth. There's always little, you know, the surface is not that smooth. And this is a great way of just bringing that smoothness down uh, and just kind of making a piece feel really finished. And it's so simple to do, which is why I do it on everything I make. So I got my linseed oil wax polish here and a piece of 4-0 steel wool. And I just put on some of the wax mixture and then I just start, you know, working the polish in. And you don't need like a whole lot, you don't need to work really hard, you just want to apply it everywhere. And the reason why I like to use steel wool for this step is because it really acts as a fine sander. It, you know, it, it makes everything even smoother. So that's really nice. So this wax is available in my shop if anyone wants it. And I'm also uh, selling one with tongue oil and somebody just asked me a question wondering what's really the difference between one with tongue oil and linseed oil? Is there a big difference? And no, there is not really a big difference. I mean, some people just prefer tongue oil 
Tongue oil is a little more expensive than linseed oil. And in, in, there has been tests, you know, where the results have been the tongue oil um, cures a little better and uh, creates more of a film. So in that, in that sense, it is a different type of oil. However, um, it doesn't really put on any different color on the wood. Not to mention here, I'm not actually reacting with the wood. I'm reacting with the polyurethane, you know, or whatever finish you have on top here is what you're really uh, reacting with. But yeah, if it was on bare wood, you wouldn't see a noticeable difference in color or anything. And when you put it on polyurethane uh, or paint, there is no color added whatsoever. So another person wrote me and asked how much square footage do these, you know, one of these jars really cover? So I did some tests and some calculations and one of these jars should cover about 40 square feet of material. So it should last for, you know, quite a few projects really. Of course it depends on <laughs> how often you use this because I really do put it on everything. Because I, I just think you can't beat that finish. No matter if you put it on, on raw wood, or on painted wood, or like here on top of polyurethane. So when you use wax, one of the things that you don't want to forget about is buffing it uh, after once you're done. So you put on your wax coat and then wait a couple minutes and then you put up, you know, you get a clean cloth. And then you just kind of buff it out. You dry, basically dry off the excess um, wax here. And I mean, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to you know, create a very thin wax slash oil finish on top here, which is what gives it, you know, that really nice smooth feeling. But you don't want a sticky, you know, surface, so that's why you buff it out. Uh, and this is true for, you know, any paste wax you buy, any Johnson or Minwax or whatever. I just don't know what they put in that stuff, so, which is why I like to make my own. Well, I think that's about it. I would say that the coffee table is complete. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my main channel, Darwin Orber, where I put up a new project video every Friday. And I'll have something up there very soon. Uh, otherwise, check me out on social media. Uh, and I'll see you in a couple of days. Bye.